Six Five is on the road here in San Francisco at AMD's second annual Advancing AI event. AI is the favorite topic of the Six Five, and whether it's infrastructure, CPU, GPU, networking, enterprise SaaS, AI PCs, we love AI. <laughs> That's a mouthful I'm when you get that. through all that, but yeah, we really did hit the, you know, we hit the uh, data center side, we hit the networking side, we hit the devices side, Pat. It was a action-packed, full day, lots going on, demos, really well attended too, and I'm seeing quite a bit of yeah. press already get out there. Uh, I think a lot of them had your quotes in them. I don't think so. I mean, I did a broadcast interview, but I'm, I'm really here for this. This is uh, so much fun. One of the biggest uh, drivers of AI, AI excitement has been uh, the AI PC. And obviously AI has been a, uh, AMD has been a major factor uh, in the PC market. Heck, going back to, you know, when I was a product manager for a PC manufacturer, <laughs> AMD, and they just keep driving up, increasing the score all the time. I want to break down some of uh, today's announcements uh, with two of my favorite AMD client guys, Jack, Rahul, great to see you. Rahul, welcome back. Yes. First time uh, for AMD, but we may have recorded you uh, at a different company. Yeah, and yeah, no. no you know, my, my trip back to AMD after 12 years at a different company feels like home. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Jack, great to see you. Great to see you. Pat. Great, Thanks for having uh, us. It's been great of spending course, time. Good, good to see, see you. you. I can't reach oh, you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's all right. We'll shake hands afterwards. Yes. Uh, well, first, let's, let's start with you, Jack. Sure. I mean, both of you, congratulations. Thank Very you. positive day. Yeah. I believe that, Pat, we have the best analysis out there, but I've been reading a lot of what's being said, <coughs> and there seems to be a lot of positivity right now. Some of the benchmarks looked great. Some mm -hmm. of the benchmarks we did on uh, Signal 65. How about That's that? pretty fun. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about the AI PC side. You announced your new Ryzen Pro. I think mm -hmm. it's the uh, AI Pro 300. I want to get right. that right. Uh, talk a little bit about you know how you kind of see this AI PC transformation. How do you see AMD continue to, to grow in this space? No, it's going to be uh, it's incredible what's happening out there. Look, you know we believe AI is probably the biggest innovation past 50 years. It's as big as industrial revolution. Yeah, it's clear it's, it's going to be new electricity. It's going to be everywhere. As right. long as there's enough electricity. That's <laughs> right. So <laughs> and when we talk to business and enterprise around the world, they're so excited with what it could bring. Right, because one of our goals is to increase productivity. Right, time is our greatest asset. Sure. Right, so then how do we protect that time for every individual, right? And one of our goals is to really accelerate, <coughs> right, minimize really repetitive tasks, mundane tasks, to allow the worker to focus on the highest value add to the business, right? To really unlock the full imagination, and that's one of our goals. And as we, you know, created you know, the first Copal Plus PC designed for enterprise, well, who and I talked about this, even with the team yeah. prior was, we want to first create a great PC, yeah. right? A better PC, maybe the perfect PC, right? And then we want a better AI. And we did much better than that. We created a leadership AI, mm -hmm. right? The best um, <coughs> AI engine in the marketplace with 50 plus tops. And then finally, we want to create the best value. Sure. Right? How do we create the best TCO? And we did all of that with the Ryzen AI 300 and we're super excited with what, what it could bring. It's actually just the very beginning. Right. I mean, AI is going to change everything that we do um, in terms of how we work, we play, um, how we create. And we're working so closely with our partners right now and the whole ecosystem to first get the platform and the form factors and beautiful form factors. Sure. Now is the experiences, right? And you're just seeing the very beginning and you saw a little bit of Copilot Plus today from Pavin. Sure. Right, that's Office 365. You saw live translation. You saw semantic search with Total Recall with the security now. And uh, we're so excited of what, what we can bring um, to the whole world. Yeah, I want to ask a follow-up to that. Yeah. So, AMD doesn't get a lot of credit for being mm -hmm. the first with an AI PC, mm -hmm. but the facts are you brought out the first AI PC. Can you talk a little bit about the journey of the AI 300? Sure. Kind of, I mean, you were the first, so there was a reason you jumped into it. Right, a driver mm -hmm. uh, on that, and then you know now in your third generation here. Talk a little bit about the journey. Sure, we thought about AI for many, many years at AMD deeply, right? And we saw the vision what AI could bring, and we invested. As you know, Pat, when you invest <coughs> in a roadmap, it's a three or five year investment and journey. Sure, right? and we also think about the next ten years. What does it look like? And you know, we placed a bet 
that AI could change the world, right? And we launched the first um, Ryzen AI processor with the first integrated MPU, as you remember, uh, sure. over a year ago with 10 tops. But we didn't stop. We then introduced 16 tops less than a year later, and then now with Strix, and uh, Strix Pro, we now have 50 plus tops. Yeah, Pavan right. seemed pretty excited uh, about the 50 tops. And Super I'm excited. Gonna, I think it's just something about a magical experience. I was like, <laughs> was. whoa, Pavan, I've, I've talked to Pavan a lot, and uh, he doesn't lean into it uh, uh, like that often. He's so very excited. It was, good, it was good to hear. So, I mean, I, as you know, Pat, Copop plus 40 tops minimum at AMD. It was like. We don't do the bare minimum. <laughs> right. We got to do the absolute <laughs> leadership, right? Bec and he told me, Jack, we will use every single top you can provide. That's exciting. Right? And it's so exciting to work with Microsoft because one of our goals with Microsoft is not just do silicon, is do the silicon, the OS, right. the application, all at the very beginning. <coughs> right. right. And that's how you unlock the full potential of the experience to our end users. And uh, you know, we're so happy to work with Microsoft. We have a very closed loop system with them. Yes. My Pam and I talk multiple times a week. Uh, you know, we text quite a bit, as Pat said. You know, we have a texting relationship, that's when you know you're very close. <laughs> oh, come and on, you, you were supposed to let that <laughs> spill out here, exactly. yes. No, but uh, we love Microsoft. Um, you know, they're, um, they want to push the envelope, they want right. to make a, uh, the world a better place. And we see AI, not just in small business, large business, but in healthcare, in right. financial services, um, in gaming. Right. Right? It's going to proliferate everywhere. And what I love about it is I'm using Copilot Plus myself right now mm -hmm. for uh, you know, meeting summarization. Of course, we do the Teams super resolution. And, and I'm using a search as well. And I see it. Right? Mm -hmm. It's saving myself time. Because you can save yourself two, three hours a day, right? 10, 15 hours a week. That's huge. Yeah, mm -hmm. sign me That's up. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you compound that across your lifetime, mm -hmm. and then you obviously can look at that as an exponential impact to the, in a, a business. A business mm -hmm. with thousands of employees, mm -hmm. each getting one hour, two hour, three hours. Of course, CEOs have to be just absolutely clamoring mm -hmm. over yeah, that opportunity. In, you know, in another life recently, <laughs> I ran a software organization, right? And we, we implemented AI co-pilot uh, in the software development processes. Mm. And you know, just at that scale, 18 to 20 percent savings in productivity. That's huge when you think about you know tens of thousands of software developers in an organization. If you can sort of create that 18, 20 percent productivity uplift, mm -hmm. that's big for organizations. Yeah, that's what huge. AI PCs can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so let me ask you. Uh, <coughs> some of the comments have been about sort of the Ryzen AI Pro, you know, 300 in the series as a whole being the best platform for yes. enterprise course, it's competitive out there. There's yeah. a few other companies that are playing in this mm -hmm. space. You know, 50 tops is great. Um, I think some people would say it's an amazing accomplishment. Other people would say, I don't know if I could visually feel the difference between 45 and 50 mm -hmm. and different numbers get thrown around. So when you start talking about platforms, you're talking about enterprise, you're talking about value. Talk about what <coughs> makes AMD's platform better for enterprise. Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. And I think it's a mm -hmm. follow on to what uh, Jack was talking about too, we first decided to make the best platform for enterprises and then put the best AI in there. And so when you think about that, wh what does that mean really? First, um, you know, if you think about the Zen 5 cores, Strix Pro uh, that we just launched today has 12 Zen 5 cores, uh, about 40% better multi-threaded performance. So if you look at a basic office use case, all of us are doing mm -hmm. Teams collaboration, we're on email, we got you know a browser running in the background, and, and and in an enterprise you got background tasks like manageability tasks or security agents running. All of that uses that processing power. So when you have 40% better processing power uh, than anyone else out there, that's pretty awesome. And and uh, if you were paying attention to what Pavan was talking about, he showed this uh, slide where he showed that um, the Ryzen Pro uh, that we launched today is about 40% better than the Apple. Mm -hmm. uh, product out there too, right? So, so from a performance standpoint, check, right? Uh, then when you think about, you know, the tops, 50 tops, that's 25% more tops than what Microsoft's, you know, uh, water water mm -hmm. level is for entering into the Copilot Plus PC experiences, and you know, so being able to provide that for, you know, things like recall that can use every bit of the tops that we provide and be more responsive, that's amazing. It's 5x more tops than the next enterprise processor that's available out there today. 
right? So that's, you know, when you, when you think about our tops, that's about 5x more tops than the other enterprise processors available today. Uh, and then we didn't just stop there, we touched every part of it. Uh, graphics engine, 16 compute units, increasing graphics 33% generationally on these products. And then give all of that uh, performance, but in a very efficient design where this processor, and this is measured data by the way, this sure. is on one of the products that you were talking about is HP announced at Build um, the EliteBook uh, XG18. And uh, <clears throat> on that process, uh, on that product, uh, we measured 23 hours of video playback, nine plus hours of Teams, 19 to 20 hours of mobile mark uh, battery life. So again, multi-day battery life with the kind of performance uplifts that you see. And what makes this enterprise is really the foundational elements of what an enterprise cares about. Highly secure products, so security, manageability, reliability, you know, those are some of the foundational elements on our pro technologies that we offer our customers. So hopefully that answered what you're looking for, but that's how we think about it. Yeah, in fact, uh, Dan and I and the 65 <coughs> were at the HP event, uh, talked to Alex Cho, yeah. and, and we covered this in our weekly pod. We were really struck uh, at how much they leaned into uh, that design that had your processor uh, in it. Um, got demos with, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you know, specific ISVs, and my question for one of them, uh, and it was, it was a video platform, I said, hey, uh, what platforms do you support? And they said, the only platform we support is AMD. I was like, oh, interesting, mm -hmm. okay. Um, but anyways, um, Jack, mm -hmm. uh, we talked a little bit about uh, what motivated the entry into AIPCs. Mm -hmm. Uh, we talked a little bit about the work that you've been doing with Microsoft, mm -hmm. what Pavan said on stage, whether mm -hmm. I'm super stoked about semantic search mm -hmm. uh, for <coughs> files and photos, because every user uses that every day, yeah. at least uh, in a, a file explorer. Completely agree. Right? Every, and it's going to change the mm -hmm. way, and then recall is kind of the icing mm -hmm. uh, on the cake here. Let's talk a little bit about the future, mm -hmm. right? How are, uh, how are you addressing ISVs uh, uh, in the future, and in terms of investment mm -hmm. uh, uh, in those ISVs and, and that, that work, uh, what are your thoughts uh, on that? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, it's, of course, Microsoft is one of the most strategic ecosystem partners, uh, but the ecosystem is very broad. So we're engaging with the top <coughs> um, ISVs in the world. Uh, we're on track to have about 150 ISVs developed by Ryzen AI in a year. These are Adobe's, Zoom, yes. Autodesk, and they see the potential, right? And it's, it's, it's things like Zoom, better video, yeah. right? And denoising, right? Be well beyond super, super resolution. And when we work with them, one of their goals is, okay, how do we get the absolute best performance, but also maximize efficiency, right. Right? especially in the mobile phone factor? So, and that's where the strength of the, of the NPU, because it can have the best perf per watt. Right, and that's what we're investing so heavily in um, AIPC because we see a world where everyone wants to have the best possible ex experience, right, but without compromising portability, right, mobility. And one of the things we want to do is not just do things a little bit faster, we also want to create net new experiences. Right. Right, so one of our goals is to, you know, do things that hasn't been done before, right, and that's one of our goals with our ISVs right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the end, it's always about the experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, I love the tech, I love the specs, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's all about what can I do differently on this platform That's right. that I can't do, and how easy it is it to even find those features. Mm -hmm. That's right. And yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're 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 at the very beginning, but, yeah. but it's it's uh, I'm optimistic uh, because it solves so many uh, problems, and quite frankly, it also helps solve an offload problem from the cloud. Definitely, yeah, uh, definitely. which is. You know, if you're doing a lot of the inference here, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be done in the cloud, and that saves cloud cloud providers yeah, money that's right. as well. That's right. That's right. Pavan kind of talked about it too today mm -hmm. in, in in his session. I heard the hybrid. the hybrid. I heard that. <laughs> yeah, kind of cloud but to edge. Yeah, I mean, them acknowledging it is a is is a great indicator of, of where it's going because Correct. their benefit is across the. Yeah, exactly. They don't really that's care. Right. They, you know, if you want to do a whole bunch of stuff in the cloud, they're like, great, you know, but it is about to the point of the experience removing latency, you know, making things instantly available, 
without connectivity at times, although that keeps getting better. But you know what, I think that segued really nicely mm -hmm. to maybe the last question, Rahul, it's just, is the practical application in the market. You know, mm -hmm. we sort of have these two schools, all of us techies, we're super hyped about this, mm -hmm. so exciting. AIPC has changed the world. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy jokingly call them all the bubble bears, everyone that says AI is overhyped. <laughs> you know, they're the ones that say, oh yeah, it's all in there mm -hmm. and you got all this hardware now, but no one's using it. You're working with the enterprises, you're talking to the enterprises. Talk about how the adoption of this technology is going and how you're yeah. seeing it. No, I think, I think if you take a step back, uh, as we exited last year, 90% uh, of the AIPCs that were sold were with our technology. Right, uh, to the point of, mm -hmm. you know, we were one Will of the first ones. We see that one ones. more time. 90% of the PCs that were sold with NPUs last year were on our technology, okay. right? So, so when you think about that, you know, we already had great momentum given we were first in market, and then as we launched products this year, we've continued to have uh, momentum. So, um, <clears throat> as, as I think about the two products that we talked about, HP announced, uh, uh, their elite book, G1A, Lenovo announced at IFA, uh, the ThinkPad 14S, right? Both mm -hmm. enterprise products using our Strix Pro 300 uh, processors. That's going to just scale up from here. Lisa showed it on stage, 100 plus products that are going to show up across the portfolio. Uh, if you sort of even take a step back and look broader than the enterprise, there are 200 plus products with AI technologies from us in the PC space that will be available from all of our OEM partners. Think about all the brand names, Acer, mm -hmm. Asus, HP, Lenovo, Dell, MSI, yeah. and, and the list keeps going. And why that's important is because if you, you know, if you know this ecosystem, the Windows ecosystem thrives on availability of different form factors, different screen sizes, desktops, notebooks, mm -hmm. and being able to reach all of our customers with however they want to uh, use the PC, right? And so, so um, you know, if you look at some of the IDC data, you know, IDC is predicting in a couple of years, majority of the PCs that are out there will be AI PCs that will have some sort of a neural processing unit. Mm -hmm. And that's the journey we're on, right? The investments we're making uh, in our AI PC portfolio, that's the journey we're on. We're completely bought in, leaned in, Correct. and so are our OEMs. Correct. And we're aggressive using AI within AMD. Right? For example, on engineering side, physical design, to get the best layout, reduce white space. We're, we're aggressive using AI on software development to get <coughs> much greater efficiency. Obviously on the marketing side, right, on the financial side, um, you know, summarization, so we're doing all that. And it's funny, Pat, I'll tell you a quick story. When we talk about semantic search, you know, Pat and I talked about, you know, today when you try to find a file in Windows, it's very difficult. Sure. File name, file you size, state. I mean, yeah. yes, it's, 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 hard, it's, it's very one difficult. One of the hardest things to do, 35 very years Very difficult, but that's not the human mind works. The human memory's work is, hey, I went to uh, San Diego with my son Louis last year, yeah. went to a great job, what was the name of that restaurant? Mm -hmm. So we want to make AI to be as intuitive as natural as possible. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to overthink, right? That's how you proliferate AI, to get the experience to how a human naturally interacts, right? And that was kind of the, the birth of semantic search, yeah. right? And, and now it's being incorporated into Copilot Plus. And you're going to see more of that where we want to make that experience to the end user as personable and customizable to every individual in the world. Yeah. And, and that's our vision. I love it. Jack and Rahul, I want to thank mm -hmm. you both. I think we could spend a bunch more time talking <laughs> about this, just thinking about how much I appreciate semantic search. Mm -hmm. and the idea that, you know, in the future, the single abstraction, mm -hmm. you know, whether I want sales data reports or mm -hmm. I want to just know yeah. the best mm -hmm. restaurant, I just want to ask just one, that's right. one, so you know, OS level bot that's mm -hmm. going to take care of all this for <laughs> me. But we'll come back. That'll be next year at Advancing AI. <laughs> Definitely. I'm, I'm excited about the personal assistant. That's, that's what I need. <laughs> well, I mean, for life. us, isn't it all the same? <coughs> when do we not work? When are we not not working? So yeah. I, don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. But Jack, Rahul, let's do this again sometime Definitely. soon. Definitely. Okay? Definitely. Pat, thank all you right. so much. Yeah, you got thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks. I'm going to yeah. take thank us you. out of here. Of thank you. We'll save you. We'll come across in just a second. I want to thank all you for tuning in. We are here. The 6.5 is on the road in San Francisco at AMD's second annual Advancing AI event. Thanks so much for tuning in. Check out all the content. Subscribe, be part of our 6.5 community. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye now.